Hello, I'm John Adams, editor of Digital Photo, and welcome to this video lesson where we're going to look at creating some fantastic starburst lighting effects. Starburst effects occur naturally if you have a light source in shot and use a small aperture setting like f16 or f22. But with a little know-how, it's an easy task to create your own starburst effects in Photoshop or Elements. Even better, you can save the effects as a brush, so when you want to use them, you simply set the colour you want and click to add it to an image. They give you the chance to pep up shots with some extra atmosphere, and if you introduce a little lens flare as well, they look even better. But the whole process starts with some brush creation, so what we'll do, we'll close this example down and we'll get cracking. To make a starburst brush, the first thing you need is a new document. Not a picture, but a new document. So we can do this in Elements or Photoshop, and the process is the same. Just hit Control and N on the keyboard, and that brings up the new dialog box. You can also get that by going to File, New, and choosing Blank File. Now in the new dialog box, what we first want to do is change our units to pixels. So we'll go to Pixels, and then we're going to type in 2000 pixels, in the width, and we're going to do the same thing in the height, 2000, there we go. Resolution, we're going to set that to 300 pixels per inch, and then we're going to make sure that color mode is set to RGB color, and the background contents are set to white. Once you've got that data input in the dialog, just click OK, and you'll get a white square screen, 2000 pixels by 2000 pixels, and this is your virtual sheet of paper where you're going to create your brush. Now we need to have our Layers panel on screen, so if yours isn't there down the right hand side, just go up to Window and choose Layers, and it will appear. We want to create a new layer, so in the Layers panel just click on this, uh, this icon here, it looks like a piece of paper with a folded corner, the Create a New Layer icon, click on that once, and you'll get a new blank layer one above your background. What we now want is the Pencil tool. Now this is grouped with the brush in the full version of Photoshop, or it exists in its own space on the tool palette in Elements. So click on the Pencil tool, and then the size we need is about 10 pixels. So you can use the left and right square brackets keys to change brush size, and we want 10 pixels, so that's good there. We need to make sure that black is set as the foreground colour, so to do that quickly you can either click on this icon here, just down here next to the colour swatches, or you can hit D on the keyboard, and that will give you the default colours of black foreground and white background. All we're going to do now is click roughly sort of a somewhere around there, but about two thirds up the image, then we're going to click and hold shift, and then drag down to draw a vertical line about so far. By holding shift, you get the line to be vertical, and that's what you want, a nice straight line straight down the page. What we're now going to do is apply a filter to this line, and we're going to use the motion blur filter. So we go up to filter, down to blur, and across to motion blur. Click on that, and you'll get the motion blur dialog. Now what we need is the angle to be set to 90 degrees, so that's straight up, and then for the distance, we're going to crank this up to about 700 pixels. So quite high, somewhere around there should be good. It doesn't have to be exact, but somewhere around 700 is perfect. You get this nice sort of streaky feathered edge coming out from our straight line. Once you've done that, click OK. And then we're going to make a copy of this layer, this straight line we've created. It exists on its own layer at the moment. We can switch it on and off. So all we're going to do is hit Control and J on the keyboard, and that makes an exact copy of that layer. There it is there, layer one copy. We're now going to go into transform mode, or free transform mode, and the quickest way to do this in either Photoshop or Elements is to hit Control and T. And that gives us this bounding box around our line. What we're going to do now is hold the cursor outside the bounding box, so we get this double-headed arrow up here. Then we're going to hold Shift and just drag it round. Shift keeps you in increments, we're going to get it horizontal. Then you can release the mouse and click the green tick or press return. They both do the same thing in setting down those changes. Now we've turned our line into a cross, we need to merge these two layers together. So we need to get this one and this one together, and the easiest way to do that is to hit Control and E on the keyboard. And that merges those two layers into the same space. So now instead of a line, we've got a cross. What we're going to do now is hit Control and J again, and that gives us a copy layer of our cross. We're now going to go into Transform again, so that's Control and T. And we'll do the same thing, we'll hold the cursor outside the bounding box, hold Shift, and then drag it round until it's at 45 degrees. Then you can release the mouse, and you've got an 8-point star. 
At least I think it's eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, an eight-point star. Double-click inside that bounding box or hit return or click the green tick, whichever you prefer. And then once again, we can merge down those two layers by hitting Control and E. Now, to add a little bit more realism to this effect, we're going to blur it. So we go up to Filter, down to Blur, and this time we're going to choose Gaussian Blur. In the dialog, set the blur to about 5 pixels. That will just soften the edge of it and make it look a bit more realistic. So we can just key in 5 into the box and then click OK. And now we have our black star on a white background and it's all ready to be defined as a brush. Now to do this, grab the rectangular marquee tool, that's this one here. Then we're just going to draw around our star, making sure we've got all those feathered edges in. So we can hold down the space bar before releasing the mouse to make sure we've got everything included. Something like that looks pretty good. And once you've made that selection around it, you then go up to Edit and choose Define Brush from Selection. And if you're using the full version of Photoshop, you'll find that under Edit Define Brush Preset. But click on that and you'll get another dialog box with brush name. So we need to give it a name and I think we'll go for Starburst 8 Point, something like that. And you can see some figures underneath the brush. That's simply the pixel dimensions of it. That's how big it is. 1641 pixels for our brush size. Now you've done that, all you have to do is click OK. And congratulations, you've just created a starburst brush. So we'll hit Control and D to get rid of the selection lines. And of course, if you want to go a little bit further, you can, of course, create a 16-point brush as well. So if we, for example, hit Control and J, we make a copy of that star, that eight-point star, and we've got it in a separate layer. All we've got to do is hit Control and T to go into Transform, and then we can rotate it round to create a 16-point star if we want. Now, you can't use the Shift key to get increments making a 16-point because the angles don't quite match, so you'll have to get it right by eye, and that looks about perfect there. Then you can double-click inside the bounding box, and if you want to make a 16-point brush, you can. Simply use the rectangular marquee once more, draw around the brush, Something like that should be good. And then go back to Edit, Define Brush from Selection, and we can call it Starburst 16 Point. Then click OK. And what we've done, we've now created two brushes, an 8-point star and a 16-point star, and they will live in our Brush Preset Picker. So we're done with this now. We can close it down, so I'll hit the X. We don't need to save it. So all you need now is an image to use it on. So we'll uh, go to File Open, and then load up any image with a light source in it. I'm going to go for this one here, Road Night. There's our picture, and we've got a light source here that we can add our Starburst brush to. So we need our brush tool, so we'll select that. And then we've got to find our Starburst brush. So we click on this icon here, this drop-down arrow. And if you scroll down to the bottom of the list, all the way down to the bottom, you'll find your Starburst brush down there, where is it? There we go, there's our 8-point star, and there's our 16-point star, the two new brushes we've created. We're going to go with the 8-point, and then you'll see your brush, there it is there, that's the one we've just created, and what we need to do now is choose a colour. Now, generally speaking, for kind of specular highlights, reflections, and light sources, you're going to want a very bright colour, and you don't get any brighter than pure white. So what we're going to do is make sure we've got white selected as our foreground colour. And to do that, you can hit D followed by X on the keyboard. That swaps over your black and white. So we've got white as a foreground. And now all we have to do is get the brush to the right size. And it's always best to do it also on a new layer. So we'll create a new layer above our image. So we create a new layer icon. That gives us a fresh layer one. Then all we've got to do is uh, use the square brackets keys to change our brush size, left to go down, right to go up. Something like that looks about right there. Then we can find the middle of our light source, and if we click, we'll get a starburst effect. Now, before you click, though, do check that your opacity is set to 100%, because if it's set lower than that, we'll get a very faint brush. So opacity to 100%, then we click on our light source, and there we have our starburst effect. Now, because the brush is slightly blurred and slightly feathered, you may want a stronger effect than you've got. So let me just hit Control and Z to undo that. If you want to get a stronger effect, all you've got to do is click twice without moving the mouse. So if we just go back into our middle and we go click, click, there we have a much stronger starburst effect, looking really natural and really effective on that light source. And of course, if you adjust brush size, we can just take it down in size. And maybe we'll pick this one as well, this light source here. And we'll do a double hit there, double click on that one. And maybe we can have one on this bit here. 
There we go. And if you want to get creative, we can even create a light source somewhere else in the frame, perhaps a nice small one. Maybe we'll have a kind of a security lamp over here. There we go. Now that's all looking pretty good, but if you want to enhance your starburst effects even more, you can add some lens flare to them. And this is really quick and easy to do as well. What we're going to do is create a new layer once more, so we'll just click on the new layer icon, and then we're going to fill it with black. Now because black's already set as our background colour, we can do that quickly by holding down control and hitting the backspace key. That gives us a black screen. And to make that black appear see-through, all we've got to do is change the blending mode of this layer from normal to screen. So we select screen and we make it see-through and our black is having no impact on the picture. What we're now going to do though is add lens flare to this black layer. So to do that we go to filter, down to render and across to lens flare. Now the easiest way to do this is to click in the middle of the preview window, that gives you a lens flare effect and I think brightness, I'm going to take it down a little bit, I'm going to set it to about 60%, something like that. That looks okay. And I've got the lens type selected as 50 to 300 millimeter zoom, but you can of course use any of the other lens flares built into Photoshop and Elements. But I'm going to go for 50 to 300 zoom. Okay, once we've got that we click OK and we get this lens flare, a blob of lens flare in the middle of the image. All we now have to do is select the move tool and then we can move our lens flare around into the position we want it. So I want to put it just here so we get that nice bit of flare coming through from our starburst effect. If you want to have it somewhere else as well, there's a quick and easy shortcut you can do. Just hold down the ALT key while you've got the Move tool selected. You can drag that flare somewhere else, so we could park it over here for example. Now it's a bit big there on that particular smaller starburst effect, so all we need to do is hit CTRL and T, and then we can reduce the size of it just by pulling on the corner of these bounding box handles. That's the sort of thing, perhaps a little bit smaller still, something like that should be good. Double click inside the bounding box when it's the right sort of size, then you can nudge it into position using the arrow keys. We can then add it somewhere else, simply hold ALT while you've got the move tool selected, drag it across, we can put one there as well, and we can put one over here too, just to complete our lens flare starburst effects. Now we've created a lot of layers in making our lens flare and our starbursts, but if we uh, open up our layers palette and have a look at what's really going on, we can switch them all off. There's our original image, and what we have is our first new layer here, layer 1, that's got all our starburst effects on, all painted on with a brush with a couple of clicks, and then we've got our lens flares on separate layers, just to augment and enhance the starbursts and add a load of extra atmosphere to our low light picture. So give that a try, make your own starburst brushes and then find a low light image or indeed any image with a bright highlight reflection or light source within it and you can add a fantastic looking starburst and get a little extra dose of magic on your pictures. Alright, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.